Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, you're very welcome to this afternoon's live masterclass from the National Concert Hall, or virtually speaking, from the National Concert Hall. This is the final one in our series of November masterclasses, and we're delighted to welcome the wonderful harpist, Jean Kelly, who is going to be working with three of Ireland's up and coming young musicians uh, in this afternoon's session. Uh, we will be back, I'm sure, in the spring with, a, uh, with our with a further series of masterclasses in which we hope to be able to come to you from the hall. But for the moment, we continue in this in this virtual world. And Jean, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you, delighted. Just for those of you watching, um, this masterclass uh, will see three participants, each taking a lesson of approximately 40 minutes each. Uh, we will have our first two participants, then we will take a short break of just about three minutes to stretch the legs, get a breath of air, and we'll proceed then with our third and final participant. At the end of the session, there will be a short Q&A session uh, during which our participants and members of the public are welcome to put questions to Jean at the end of the session. So if you do have any questions, we would encourage you to submit them to us via our social media channels, our YouTube channel and Facebook uh, channel, um, and we will relay them to Jean towards the end of the masterclass. So we hope that you have a very enjoyable afternoon and uh, we welcome Jean. Jean hails from an Irish family of several generations of professional musicians. In 1996, she won a scholarship to study harp at the Royal College of Music in London. And since graduation, she has based herself in London and is in great demand as a highly versatile harpist. Jean regularly tours with the Locrian Ensemble, performing harp concertos with her own arrangements of Irish music. And she has recorded three CDs with the group. In May 2011, Jean was invited to Dublin to play for the historic visit of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth to Ireland. She also performed alongside Nobel Prize winning, sorry, Nobel Prize winner Seamus Heaney at the opening night of the World Harp Congress in Dublin and accompanied Irish President Ma Mary McAleese on a state visit to Austria. Jean has a duo with her sister Fiona Kelly, an award-winning flautist, and also plays electric harp with her band Ranagree. Jean, you're very welcome and thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, it's a pleasure. The first of our students is Paige MacDonald and Paige is a 14 year old student uh, who joined the Geraldine O'Doherty's harp class at the Royal Irish Academy of Music at the age of nine. Paige has won the Northern Ireland Primary Schools Musician of the Year and the Sheena Larchet Cup at the Festkill for under 18 concert harp. In 2019, Paige was invited by presenter John Toll to record three pieces for solo harp, which were broadcast on his programme, Classical Connections for BBC Ulster. Paige, we're delighted to have you with us today and we're very much looking forward to hearing you play. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, switch off my mic and camera and Jean and Paige, I'm going to leave you to the session and we'll see you in about 40 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. So Paige, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to hear you play. What are you going to play for us first today? Um, first of all, I'm going to play the Nocturne by Zenka, and then I'm going to play the Beige Nocturne by Pearl Terrafuck. Lovely. Why don't we have a listen to the Glinka Nocturne first?
Wow, Paige, well done. That's absolutely super. You know, I was your age when I started playing the harp, so I'm so impressed that, that you're at that level already. Really, really well done. Do you like this piece? Yes, I love this piece. It's, it's one of my favourites as well. It's lovely. So let's go back to the beginning. And I think you're at that stage where you could probably play this without the music as well. So I'd really encourage you to to go for it and play it, play it without the music. I think, I think you're really close because like, you weren't really looking at the music very much. Yeah. So really well done. So let's just have a look. I think Glinka is quite specific um, with regards to his dynamics and he really notes the changes of mood in different sections. And I think we could just work on just capturing them a little bit more. So let's say if we have a look at the first phrase there. So have you got Amoroso written underneath your very first note? Yeah, so he, it's a nocturne and, you know, it's kind of evening salon music. And so we want to really start with a really lovely tone, which you already have. But I think we can just make that phrase sing a little bit. So let's just re try that phrase again, maybe just with the right hand. And let's just see about really, really squeezing into those strings before you start so that you're really setting up. And just... Just really, let's go for that C, that lovely C there. So will you just try just the right hand? Um, let's play until the end of the second line, just the right hand, and just try to really sing that melody. Follow it through to the end of the second line there. Yes, lovely. Just be careful at the end when you have semi quavers. They sound like quavers to me. So just be very precise with them. So ba bum bum or ba bum. Just don't linger too much on those semi quavers. Can we try that once more? And, and just really watch out for your semi quavers. Just the right hand again, because you were singing really beautifully there. Lovely. That's really nice. So we're going to add the left hand back in in a minute, but I just want to try an experiment with you. Will you try? I want you to play the left hand line, but I want you to split it between the hands so that your left hand is just playing the lowest note. Let me just demonstrate because I'd like to really hear those bass notes, the bottom ones of, of every six there. So if we go follow that lovely bass line so just try it at your own speed there so taking those bass lines with the left hand and just see if you can really sing them out and then the right hand is the lovely accompaniment there in the middle let's just try that just the same amount Lovely. So you're getting a really nice shape there. So let's put it back all together just as written now, but see if you can imagine almost as if you were playing this in a duet with yourself so that you, your hands were so free that you could really concentrate on bringing out that, that bass note as well. Okay. So just keep that idea in your head and let's hear the same thing now, hands together. Don't worry.
Lovely. That's so much better. I can hear you really singing out both the melody and you're really supporting yourself with your lovely bass line there as well. Beautiful. So let's skip the next couple of bars. Can we move to the next section, which is animato? Do you see that just at the end of the, the fourth line? I think we can just maybe be a little bit more intense here. I don't think that the speed or the tempo needs to change, but let's just, let's go for a different mood here from the beginning. Maybe the beginning is quite wistful and, and delicate and we can be a little bit, maybe slightly more urgent here. So will you just play that? Let's go and I'll, and I'll stop you after a little while. So just from the animato. Lovely, lovely. That, that's really, really nice. You're getting a lovely contrast now. I think with your octaves at the end of the first page, go even more. You want to really aim for that top E flat octave on the second page. You can go even, even louder, I think. So a bigger crescendo, let's really go for it. I think that's the first forte in the piece. So we want to really make the most of it, a big contrast to the pianist pianissimo that we've had before so let's do animato once more and when you get to those octaves just think of of powering through to the e flat and building up a really big crescendo there it's a bit more drama Great. And let's just stop there again for a second. Lovely. Such a nice tone that you're making. Just watch. I think we need to watch our tempo. Sometimes with the harp, we get carried away and we forget the pulse and we mustn't change the tempo too much, especially if it's not specified in the music. So you were a lovely, um, say if I go from the third line, you're a lovely laid back tempo here. Just stay steady here. Then a huge contrast to pianissimo here. But just watch, I think, keep your pulse. You started racing ahead there. And I think just maintain whatever tempo you've chosen at the beginning. You, you need to stick with it there. But make the drama with the crescendo and diminuendo rather than with the speed there. So maybe let's go from, um, where's a nice place to go from? Maybe the end of the second line, the last two beats of the second line on the second page. And just think of your pulse there, stay steady. And then let's really go for that pianissimo sound at the end of the fourth line. Great. Stop there. Lovely. That's really good. And when you're practicing this um, again, you can, again, I would go back to doing splitting the left hand between the hands when you're practicing. So you can really hear exactly where your, what your bass note is doing. It can really help support you in your melody. There's just really nice movement there. So you can practice it like that. Let's go to the, the last line there, the res, risoluto, so it's marked. And I think we want to carry on this risoluto om, almost to the end of that line. So we've got our big chords here. Do, do a really big, nice big squeeze of the strings before you play this chord and make sure that all eight fingers are on before you play that chord. So really place, squeeze the strings and then articulate. 
I want you to really stay resoluto in those two chords. So I think quite a fast spread there. Think, you know, real Russian resolve there. You want a completely different character in that phrase from the beginning, which is much more sensitive and delicate. OK, so let's go. Can we just try? Let's just try the last line there, the re resoluto section. That's it, yeah. So you had a lovely contrast then, if, if you're that resolute in that section, then it's a lovely contrast to where we get just over the page where it's with melancholy now, so you can do the nice gentle. And I, I think really go for it in this melody. Ba, 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 ba. I love that top F, so really, really squeeze that F with the thumb. And then you can come away again at the end of the phrase with the E flat. Can we just go back to the risoluto once more? And I think maybe try for maybe try for a faster spread in that first one. I think that'll help to capture that kind of mood as well. So a slightly quicker spread in the first one. Yeah, lovely. Sorry to stop you again. I think you can you go even more over the top and ba 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 bum, bum. Just really sink into that F with the thumb. So maybe squeeze it even more and absolutely articulate the thumb over to the second finger as much as you can there. And that was lovely, your your chord. It was lovely and soft and a little bit of a slower spread. So a really nice contrast to the previous section. Let's just go from the, the top of the third page there, the melancholy section. And then just have a look at your dynamics there. So you're pianissimo now. So we need to come away to nothing here in this first chord. So almost nothing. Let's just try from the beginning of that page again, just to get the contrast down to absolute pianissimo. That's it. And again, just with the rhythm, just watch your demi semi at the end of this. Bum, bum, bum. Just make sure that C upbeat into the last bar it is, is nice and short. It's a demi-semi. Just make sure it's not even with the rest of them. That was lovely, but I think you can do even more. Can we bring the pianissimo? Just play as soft as you dare. Okay. So once more, and then let, let's carry on this time. And I'll just stop you there. Sorry, I feel bad stopping you when it's so lovely. But let's just work on this section here. So agitato, we've, we've got to this section here. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a different speed again, but we need to just feel that sense of maybe 
urgency or it needs to be a change of mood again from the what came before so can we just let's just try if we can just play the left hand just to see if that lovely left hand line can lead us bom, bom. just see if you can just see if you can really sing out that left hand just try the left hand for me That's it. So, so just always keep keep that left hand little melody in in your mind when you're playing this. And so, let's just try and think without playing faster. But we need to just have a feel of forward motion. So we definitely don't want to sit back on the beat and you know when you're thinking, oh, this is such beautiful harmony and so angelic and lovely. We need a little bit more urgency though. So slightly different mood. pushing through on all those bars okay and let's when we get to the two lines before let's really go for it you've got a forte there again and we want to really really bring that out okay and yeah let's let's hear that from the agitato so just think forward motion here And don't, don't let yourself, you, you're so musical and sometimes we need to fight against when we want to take time. We've got to follow, there, there's a pulse and a beat that we've got to keep. So don't let yourself pull up at the end of, of that line. Th that was so musical and beautiful, but I don't think it's what he needs here. He needs to be agitato. So just make yourself go forward in that bar. Because we have to get to this A. So there's no room for, for any kind of ritardando or any kind of slowing down at the end of these. Just, just keep powering through, okay? Take the brakes off. Let's try it once more. And Paige, now all of a sudden you're, you're at a new speed. You've got faster all of a sudden. So maybe if you're comfortable with that speed, let's go back and, and, and start the whole section at that speed because I like that speed, but it's different. You've, you've gone up a gear. And again, we need to, we need to decide on a speed and, and stick with it unless he says otherwise, which he doesn't, okay? So do you want to try the agitato once more and, and just go for it? I, I think you're well able to play it faster. So let, let's go for it at that new speed. Just play a bar or two of that new of where you just stopped, just so you can get the speed into your head, and then we'll go back to the agitato. Good. So let's let's. That's a lovely pulse there for this section. That's it. Don't, don't worry about that. That was lovely, lovely, much better. There's just a lovely, lovely sense of, of motion now in that section. Fantastic. Now, I would love to leave time to move on to the next piece. So can we skip towards the end? We'll skip this next section, which is quite similar to the beginning. And I'd love to just have a look at the end. So if we go to the second last page, I think this is my favorite bit of all this piece the end because you've got this I think you really want to think like a cello here you've got this beautiful bass line and and really it's just chords in the right hand isn't it so so you've got the chance now to really shape the left hand and we want to really let those strings ring out you know almost as if we were playing 
our strings with a bow so that we've really got that sustain in the notes and um, let's ju let's just give it a go just from that bit and just really try and sing out your left hand there Lovely. That's really, really great, t uh, Paige. You've got absolutely, it's, it's just so lovely, the shape. And um, you know, when you get to the last line, you're doing this already, but I think you can do it even more. There's just, I love this line in the right hand. Bum, 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 bum. Really go for the second note. Bum, 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 bum. I think you can exaggerate that a little bit more. Um, he, he's even, he's got an accent on that second note in, in that phrase. So re really go for it there. Um, where is a nice place to go from? How about we just go from the beginning of the second last line on that page? So really, I want to really hear um, bum, 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 in the right hand. I want to hear that lovely, it's just a little three note motif, isn't it? It's lovely though. So you'll need all your pedals and naturals as if you're in C major. And come away for, you know, in the, in those little phrases, come away on the third note. So you're building up, bum, bum, this is the important note and come away. And again, bum, 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 come away. J just so it's got that really lovely shape. Just one more time there. That's it. And just stop there for a sec. This is, a, I think this is another magic moment in the left hand here on the third line before the end. So we've got bum, 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 bum. It's just such a lovely little chromatic moment. I don't know that we've had C flats much in the piece. So I think you want to really make the most of that. It's a really nice, interesting harmony. So really go for it. Sing out your left hand there. <laughs> So I really want to hear that bum, bum, bum. Don't get it, don't let it get lost in the harmony going around. Just try from there to the end and really bring out those four bass notes there. Don't worry. So if you get yourself into four flats at the beginning of that line with your C natural and we'll just try once more. That's it. And just watch, just watch your um, notes in the right hand, the second last beat. Sorry, I'm in the wrong pedals now, but just, I think you've got a slightly wrong chord there. Just, just try it once more and just watch for the notes. Fantastic page, that was absolutely lovely. Well done, excellent. We've just got a few minutes left, so why don't we move on to the beige nocturne? So this is by Pearl Chertok, an American lady harpist who, she was born in 1918, and she had a very fascinating life. Do you know much about her? I've just been having a little read about her. So she played with the CBS television orchestra for years and she was really 
jazz influenced in her writing and she did lots of jazz records and things like that. You can even, there's, if you root around on YouTube, you can find an audio recording of her playing the suite and it's, it's really interesting to hear it. So let's go for it, Beige Nocturne. Fantastic. Isn't it such a great piece? Yeah, it's so lovely. Yeah. Have you played the, the rest of the pieces in the suite? I've played the first movement. Fantastic. And then the, my favourite one is Harp Aside at Midnight, the next movement that I'm sure you'll learn at some stage. It's a great crowd pleaser, isn't it? Lovely. I think you, you really captured the, um, the mood of this piece because she's got a lovely little um, programme note with it, doesn't she? When she says, evening time, you're at your vanity choosing your perfume and there's a faint suggestion of a waltz but only for a fleeting instant and the beige melody brings you back to the fragrance of the evening mood why do you think she called it beige nocturne um not actually sure it's it's funny isn't it because i think we think of beige as being kind of a boring color and i don't think she meant boring nocturne did she what do you think what do you think she could have meant instead by choosing that color I, I think she just means, I think sometimes people have beige on the walls because they think it provides an air of calm and relaxation. So, so I think maybe that's what she meant. And I thought you, I thought you really captured that. It's, it's really, really lovely. And you really brought out the left hand really beautifully as well. Um, just a couple of bits. Let's just have a look at the second page. Um, if we go down halfway through, you know where you... <laughs> I think that's a kind of harp writing that crops up quite a lot so we, we've got this downward kind of arpeggio and it's just pianissimo and she says freely and I always think of you know if you had a piece of gauze or a scarf and, and you threw it up in the air and it would just waft down slowly wouldn't it no stress and so I wouldn't play that you're not trying to be virtuosic there you're just trying to be very very laid back you can still be quick you had it was a lovely speed that you were playing at, but just try and think of just something wafting down 
in the air. Let's just try and get that kind of a feeling rather than, you know, I'm showing off how fast I can play, which is very impressive, by the way. But let's just try and capture just much more laid back, lighter and just a little bit freer there. Um, Can we go from, so if we get our, put the harp into three flats and then just put your G flat pedal on. And if we go from the beginning of the third line there, just maybe the upbeat at the end of the first bar. So just from your, just from there, great. And maybe maybe leave a bit more time before you play that. It's 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 still a little bit frantic. So just enjoy this gorgeous jazzy chord with this really scrunchy harmony. Just let it ring for a minute because it has it has a pause mark over it. So you've got I think you've got time there. Just and then just this is nothing. It's 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 just a little color. Let's try it once more, just from the same place. Just try it, maybe even, maybe start a little bit slower. Bum, 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 bum. And then it's kind of, it's, you know, it's gathering momentum as it goes down, but, but just starts off slow. Once more. Good, keep going. Lovely. Paige, I think we're going to have to stop there because the time is up. Thank you so much. You're such a superstar and such a beautiful tone that you're making on the harp, even through the Ethernet and the Internet and everything. Absolutely fantastic. So carry on doing what you're doing. And I really look forward to hearing you again. Have you got any questions about either of the two pieces before we go? Um, Brilliant. Well, well done. And I look forward to hearing you again sometime. Well, thank you very much, Paige. Well done. Lovely playing. And Jean, thank you for your comments and insight um, into what is a fascinating uh, instrument and a beautiful uh, piece of music or, or, or pieces of music. Um, folks, just to remind you, we're going to have our second participant coming up very, very shortly. And then after that, we're going to take a very short break. But please don't go too far. We will be uh, back with you after just a couple of minutes. So next up, we have Siobhan Brady, and Siobhan is a third year BMUS student at CIT Cork School of Music. She started the concert harp three years ago under Anne-Marie Papin Labazordier and studied up to grade eight on the Celtic harp under Janet Harbison. With the Celtic harp, Siobhan has toured internationally with the Irish Harp Orchestra and won the Guinness World Record for the highest harp concert. Siobhan chose to focus on the concert harp for her degree, however, due to her love for the pedal harp and the idea of playing in orchestras. <clears throat> is, Siobhan, uh, is Siobhan there with us? Siobhan has just... She's just to, about to um, yeah, join, I think, just, again. She, she exited and is re-entering. So we'll be just... <laughs> she should be just with us in a second. Hi, Siobhan. How are you doing? Hi. Good. Okay. Great. Did you, you, you just uh, lost the connection there for a minute, but you're yeah. back. Uh, you're back with us now. So um, after this, uh, we'll be taking a very short break. But for now, Jean and Siobhan, I'll leave you to it and enjoy the session. Brilliant. Lovely to meet you, Siobhan, virtually. And you're coming from Cork today, I think, are you? Yeah, fantastic. I'm a big fan of Cork. Yeah. And so I was reading about you and I heard that you're a world record Guinness World Record holder. Yes, I am. Would, uh, would you be able to tell everybody about that story? Because it's just the most yeah. amazing thing I've ever heard. Um, I broke the record for the highest harp concert about two years ago in aid of cystic fibrosis in the Himalayas. That is fantastic. How did you get a harp up to the top of the Himalayas? That's what I want to know. We used a truck and then we had Sherpas and we put like um, sticks against the harp uh, flight case and just carried it up. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah. So playing the harp must be a doddle after that. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. What are you going to start with today for us? Uh, I'm going to do Elegy by Bernard Andres. Fantastic. Do you know the backstory of this piece? No, I don't. So Bernard Andres is um, a French harpist and composer. And 
he says that he so it's called elegy for um the death of a shepherd and he's he had a friend who lived near by him who's a shepherd in france and he was walking past the shepherd's house one day and this melody popped into his head and he went home and wrote it down and and the melody became this piece but he found out later that day that the shepherd had died unbeknownst to him and it was just very strange that this melody had just appeared to him as he walked past and it's it's such a lovely piece yeah it's beautiful so would you would you like to play it for us
Fantastic. Well done, Siobhan. Can I just check? We did a sound check before and your sound is it's a, it's coming across a little bit warped. Would you just check that you've enabled original sound again? Maybe it might have got caught yeah, off. It should be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Fantastic. It's such a big piece, isn't it? You're, you've done so well. It's absolutely amazing. It's so difficult. Really, really well done. I loved your really big, strong sound at the beginning. I think sometimes I've heard people really creep in at the beginning and it is Mark Forte, isn't it? So really well done. Fantastic. Really strong bass notes there and they're really supporting your um, right hand. Now, personally, I find that the beginning of this, I think it's just one of the hardest, apart from scales on the harp, and chromatic. It's so difficult to play chords like that because it, it's very tiring on the hand, isn't it, yeah. to stay in the same position. And also it can be difficult to not sound choppy because we're, we're trying so hard not to buzz the strings because everything is vibrating and you're trying to replace closely and that, that's really, really tricky. And you played really cleanly. I just think we could maybe free up the melody a little bit more. Okay. Um, I think that's why I really like the story of... of where the beginning of this piece came from. So you have to imagine if somebody was singing it, he, he wouldn't sing da, 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 da. I'm not saying you were playing it like that, but, but we, we get stuck playing like that with chords like this, I think. We get a little bit too choppy. Could we just try just playing the melody, just with the right hand? You know, as, as if it was just as easy as anything and, and it was, you know, you were just whistling it going down a little country lane. Just try it. That's it. And I think just in that bar, just be careful not to go for the second beat. I'm kind of hearing... I'm hearing an accent on that every time that comes back because it almost sounds like you're, you're a, you know, that that's the first beat of the bar. So we let's just kind of just shape that a little. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Just just come away ever so slightly on that C just so we're not hearing it. I don't want to kind of hear a punch in the middle of that bar. Just try it once more. And I think you can you can start softer as well, because even though the beginning of the piece is marked forte with the left hand, we do go down to piano when when this moment when this melody comes in so just try softer and then you can you can make a little bit more um of the crescendo go for the f rather than the c later on okay just once more just playing just the melody in the right hand no, sorry. don't worry even softer much softer
That's it. And just just always thinking about tailing off. Bottom, bum, bum. The, the F is the important note there. That's where the crescendo is aiming towards. Now, can we try? We're going to add the, the left hand just to provide a little bit of backup, but not the middle harmony. So we get... So just just like that and, and just think nice and relaxed you're, you're you're strolling of a summer evening something like that yeah nice lovely really really lovely shaping there so let's go back and now let's play it as written, but trying to keep that feel of as if it was just as easy as singing out that melody. So, so a nice legato through those notes. Lovely. What, what a lovely shape you have there. That's really nice. It just, it, it feels more legato now and there, there's a much nicer feel of where the melody is going. Really, really lovely. Can we move on to the second page? So then we have all these interesting harmon harmonics and all these lovely harps. Bernard Andres loves his special effects, doesn't he? So we've, um, we've got the pinched sound. So if I just describe to everybody, so it's, you're literally pinching the string. It's not something we, we do very often, is it? Unless it's marked. So you're, you're really displacing the string. Just see if you can displace those strings even more okay. so, so that you, you really pull it away. So, you know, I can really notice that it's far away from, from the two strings. So really pull it away and then release. It's real bow and arrow and, and your, your fingers should be still, still pinching afterwards. Now, can we just try that? Um, maybe if we just go uh, the end of the third line where you've got, just a little tune there with the with the pinching sound. Let's just try that. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. Just to, to let that really ring out. Fantastic. And just before we put it together, can we go to the last line? So we have the xylophonic sounds. Can you explain to everybody how we make the this xylophonic sound on the harp? Uh, with the other hand, do you like press down at the bottom? Yeah, it's such a nice effect, isn't it? Just be careful. Don't press too hard with the left hand because sometimes the, then the ring, the string can't really ring as much. So just really light touch with the left hand. And then you can really, you know, because it's um, forte, so you can really go for it, really, really squeeze that string before you play it. But just think very, I think we're tempted to tense up with the left hand because we see the forte. So just very, very light touch with the left hand, but really squeeze the string and really articulate your finger all the way into the palm of the hand so that we can really get the maximum sound out of this effect. Should we just hear that little xylophonic sound phrase there? So just think light touch with left hand and as articulate as, as you can be in the right hand. The whole thing with the chord bits as well? Um, no, let's just try the last page, maybe just those two bars in the middle. Or sorry, not the last page, the last line. Yeah, let's see if we can get an even nicer sound on the B flat. So maybe it needs to be lighter there with the left hand. Lovely. Yeah, and I think you could squeak. The, it's, it's, you're shaping it really nicely. But let's see if we can get even more sound just from the first bar. Yeah. On the forte. So ju just th this is the right hand. Really, really squeeze those strings and really articulate the hand. That's so nice. It's really, really singing out now. Fantastic. Let, let's just move on and we'll just cover a couple of those little effecty bits and, and then we can come back. Um, this was all really great. Your harmonics are so good. Well done. They're really singing out. Um, so if we go to um, the section, so if we skip a few pages and we get to um, where we go into four flats and we're in four, four. Yeah. So this is where we have the pedal um, effect. So we're, we're playing a chord and then we have to press the pedal, don't we? Which, which makes this nice sound. So I think here, 
it's a really great effect this but I think you have to be really really strict with yourself with the rhythm yeah. otherwise it can sound messy and sometimes with these pedal effects it, it just sounds like we've pressed the wrong pedal sometimes doesn't it so yeah. I think the way around that is just to be absolutely honest with the rhythm and um, so can we just try that for a few bars let's just go from that that four four bar and let's just carry on a few bars there <laughs> And, and th I think that's a tricky one, um, that last bar. Yeah. Um, so just make sure with the pedal that you, so you need to really hold it down when you get to the natural. Do you, I like to practice these kind of things actually not playing. Just put the harp down and just try that bar. But and just maybe count to four in your head before you start. And then just just try just practicing the pedals just so you, you can get the feel of being super rhythmic almost yeah. as if you were playing a percussion instrument there just just try that once with that bar yourself and then we'll try playing it so it's it's the first bar of line three yeah oh, sorry <laughs> don't worry <laughs> that's it and it's the ease i think we have to what yeah. the ease and the b's <laughs> Just to really be in control of those, really, you know, really feel where, where you're landing on the, the pedal shelf there where, it, where it's natural. Should we try and play that once more? And just again, just maybe think of the pulse before you start and then we'll go, we'll go really rhythmically into that and then we, we'll carry on this time. Mm -hmm. So just from the 4-4 four, four bar again. Do you just try it once more. You're, everything is great. It, it's just the E's and the B's are letting you down. So we just need to have a little bit more control over the feet there. J just try it one last time. that's it so just something to just keep an eye out yourself that's something I think you can just take that section out and, and just be really really strict with those E's and B's and um, let's carry on and I was just going to say just when you get to the Pre de la Table bit because he later he later marks low in the strings but not Pre de la Table which is which we play really right by the soundboard I think you can be even lower there I, d I didn't hear enough of the contrast there. So I think you could be quite softer as well because it's marked piano, but just make sure you're really right down playing by your soundboard there. So shall we go from the second bar of line three, the, the mezzo forte, and, and then we'll keep going. And so here we're pianissimo now. The pedals are starting to sound really good now. That was great. Um, but really soft. It's almost like let the pedals be making the sound, not the fingers. So, so really, I think, you know, just be as soft as you dare there. And, and we want to hear the sound of the mechanism there. So can, is that an awkward place to go from? Can we just go from the last bar of the um, fourth line there? that's it and again any time we've got this so we've got this tapping on the soundboard with the nail yeah. try and be as clear as you can I'm, I'm sort of so we've got three notes I'm kind of losing the first two da 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 you need to be you know think of a trumpet playing that kind of a I think we're, we're always a bit lazy when we have this kind of rhythm with the harp again we're kind of played a bit too musically or a bit muffled yeah. so da 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 you want to or you know a snare drum you want to really really be very rhythmic there can we just try that once more and just just really tap make sure that the nail really that you're really getting the sound of the nail rather than the sound of um the palm of your or the tip of your finger <laughs> Great. 
great fantastic Th- this was this was all really good this is so hard well done brilliant so can we skip down about halfway down this page and when we get to let's see if i can get into the right key this section here where we have our bespiliando so that was really impressive speed that you were getting up with, especially with your right hand there. But I think it, it was coming across quite loud here. Okay. Just be really, this, is, this should be just a shimmer. I really want to hear the left hand. I really want to hear that, this, you know, this is the. In fact, let's just try it. Let's try that section without this bespiliando and what I'd like you to do just let's see because we can sometimes sing more with the right hand let's see if we can split the left hand line between the hands so you're going to take the low chords with the left hand playing all the wrong notes but something like that so I want you to really sing out that middle line okay with your right hand That's it. Good. So, and again, it's almost like you're imagining you're playing a harp duet with somebody and somebody else is playing the Bishbiliander really softly. Yeah. You know, it's just a shimmer in the background. It's, it's just an effect. Um, so, and, and just really, let's play it as written now, but really bring out, so you've got your lovely chord, but really go for it here, this middle. And sing it out as much as you can with the left hand. So hardly any, hardly touch the strings with the right hand. Brilliant. And, and then this was all this was all great. That's lovely. That's really nice. And, and when when you get to the page that we just landed on, you can you can be loud with everything then because we have the yeah. forte there, don't we? So you can really go for it. Brilliant. And um, I was really impressed with your glissandos at the end of this page. Well, you're that you're fingering. Oh, my goodness. That's so difficult. Well done. That was really great. Um, let's see. Let's just skip to the last page, because, again, I want to leave time to hear your other piece. So when we get to this, when it goes back into three, four and the, the four flats again, we need to really sing. I think this is really emotional, um, this moment. And I think you could do more to sing it out. So very, very soft, as soft as you dare. It's pianissimo. But we really want to hear. Let's just try, even though it's supposed to be played at the right hand. Let's just try once playing it with the, with the right hand and the left hand taking the lower notes, just so we can join it up really legato. Just so we can really sing and shape that melody. Just try that once for a bar or two. That's it. And I think again, like I was saying with the... Bum, bum. Oh, always aim for the first beat of the bar. So, um, bum, bum, and then come away, and then here again. So one, two, three, one. We want to really go towards that that C, the first beat of the bar. And um, let's try it as written. I think you can you can be much much softer. You, you, you're um, you're making a fantastic big sound, but let's hear more contrast at the bottom of the dynamic range there. So really really gentle here. Great, yeah, keep going, it's lovely. That 
that's it. And I think there, so you, you, there's a lot going on isn't there, isn't there? Because you've got this little melody in the right hand, ba-dum, ba-dum. And then in the left hand, in very close proximity, you have... But I think this left hand melody, we must be careful that it doesn't get lost with every, you know, it's, it's all quite close together there in a very resonant part of the harp. So in, he says low in the chord, so I think he can be lower in the strings with the right hand and then those strings won't resonate so much. So even though it's pianissimo, just really think about bringing down this. It's such, it's such a lovely little melody there. So really, really sing that out. And we'll play to the end, but just, you know, when you get to the three, four in the second last line, um, this bit. Just be very, very, very light. I felt you were a little bit heavy there the last time. It, it, it's, it's pianissimo and it should never come above pianissimo to the, to the end of the piece, okay? So j- just try and be as light as you can and, and just, you know, up the harp with those lovely A's that are, or whatever note that is, C's that are descending or ascending. <laughs> I'm speaking opposite language now. So let's go from um, the three, four to the end. Let's really, really bring out that left melody. And then let's be really, really light for the last phrase, the last six bars. fantastic really well played that that's really really great it's such a big piece well done Siobhan would you like to play some Naderman for us next sure so this is the is, is it sonata number six uh yes yeah are you going to play the first movement um the prelude and the allegro fantastic Thank you. 
Great. Siobhan, let's, let's stop there because it's a long piece, isn't it? So, yeah. so let's work on this in sections. Fantastic. You're, you're up to such a brilliant speed. Really, really impressive. Well done. So this is by Naderman, isn't it? French composer and harpist. There was, there was a lot of them about and he was a very famous virtuoso harpist in the 1800s. And so it's not Mozart, is it? It's lovely, but it's, you know, we've got to really make the most of it. We, we've got to put a lot into this music to, to really make it sing. Um, so I loved your opening. It was, it was really nice and dramatic. That, that was really great. Let's go on to the, to the Allegro. So I think we just need to mark contrasts in the section. So there's sections. So he says at the beginning, Allegro, Disparato. So, you know, you can really go in strong like you're doing. You know, it's all business, isn't it? That's, that's really great and really loud. And then when we get to the third line, I think we need to start. I used to think of um, trying to style this on opera music. You know, I used to try and think of opera singer in the orchestra. And what, you know, if this was orchestrated, what, who might be playing what or singing what. And so, so this has to be much more tender when the melody comes into the right hand. <laughs> You don't need to lose the speed, but we need, it needs to sing. It needs to really, really come from the heart here. And very delicate because we've gone from a big resolute forte right back to, to piano. And um, so let's just try that. And let's really, you know, he's marked out. So the thumbs, we need to really bring, bring out the thumbs. Just, just try playing that. So play the left hand as written and just leave out the semi quavers in the right hand. Let's maybe have the upbeat so we get... Again, really, really aim for that A. Let, let's just try that for four bars or so. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, good. And and now try and keep try and capture that really melodic lyrical. You're an opera singer, and let's play it now as written. Just that little phrase. Good. And this should be this should be nothing. The, the A is important, so um, the, that's just a scale. It's it's nothing. So keep, let the A resonate, and then away to nothing. We just again make sure not to accent the middle of the bar. Don't want to hear that D. It's it's it just just let it fade away every time it comes back. Just try that once more. Just that phrase. Yeah, that's it. Good. We've very little time left, so I'm just going to skip on. If we have a look at the middle of the, the second page, um, this bit. So I think you need to really think like an orchestra here just to, to really bring out some magic here. So nice straight chord here. Big, you know, maybe it's a brass section or something. And then I always like to think of this bit as being, you know, the violins working very hard. Ba, 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 you know, busy violins, but very soft. And then maybe the flute takes over here. Ba, da, da, so you can be really lyrical here. We just really need to sing out, especially when composers write these kind of scale passages, because it can all sound a bit. Da, 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 da. So just try and say, let's go from there. So busy violins, but soft. And then really sing out the, the tune after the second chord. So just from the fourth line there. With the chord. Yeah, that's it. Nice straight chord there, be very resolute there. So you'll be in kind of in C major with a G sharp. I'm so sorry to stop you Siobhan because we're out of time but I can hear the contrast coming through just go for it with the contrast here listen to opera music of the time and be inspired by the, the orchestration and, and what the singers do especially with you know when singers have those long scale passages you know if when we're on the piano or the harp sometimes we're just tempted to kind of you know we just go into kind of playing by rote 
sort mm-hmm. of rather than thinking about really shaping them. So just a little bit more contrast, but it, but it's really great and it's so impressive what you're playing and you've got a magnificent sound there. So really well done. Thanks. Thank you very much, Siobhan. Well done. Beautiful yeah. playing and very challenging music, I thought. So uh, thank you for that. And Jean, uh, again, for your comments and insights. Um, Folks, we're going to take a very short break, uh, just about three minutes. But before we do that, I would just like to remind those of you watching that uh, we will be having a short Q&A session um, after our third and final participant. So please do submit any questions that you might have for for Jean uh, via our YouTube or Facebook channels. And we will be very happy to address them to her at the Q&A session after our final participant. So please don't go anywhere um, other than to stretch the legs, get a breath of air, and we will be back with you in about three minutes. Thank you.
Well, welcome back, everybody, and uh, we're delighted uh, to continue this afternoon's masterclass with Jean Kelly, um, with our third and final participant. After which, as I uh, said a few minutes ago, we will have a short Q and A section. So please do submit questions via our YouTube, Facebook channels. Um, we're delighted now uh, to welcome Carol. I beg your pardon, Cara Lord Bizet, and Cara is currently in her third year of the Bachelor of Music degree at TU Dublin Conservatoire, studying under Professor Cleena Doris. She's been a prize winner in the Fesh Kill competitions and TU Dublin orchestral competitions. In 2020, she was selected for the RTE National Symphony Orchestra Mentoring Scheme. She has performed both in Ireland and abroad as a member of the TU Dublin Harp Ensemble, Tradition Ensemble, and the Humanitarian Symphony Orchestra. Cara, you're very, very welcome, and uh, we hope you enjoy uh, your time with Jean. So we look forward to seeing you again after uh, this session, but I will leave you, Jean, and you, Cara, to uh, proceed with the music. Thank you. Fantastic. Lovely to meet you virtually, Cara, and um, you're playing one of my all-time favourite heart pieces. My will you tell everybody what you're going to play? And so I'm playing Omatan by Marcel Tournier. Fantastic. How long have you been playing the harp for, Cara? Um, I've been playing Irish harp since I was nine, and then I took up concert harp when I was 16. Brilliant. So about four years. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Well, shall we have a listen?
Fantastic. Well done. What a tour de force. So good. So many notes. <laughs> That's really, really great. So um, Marcel Tournier was another harpist composer, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And so really, really knew how to write for the instrument. And I think he was also very exacting in his dynamics and really how he wanted it to be played. And so we just have to be really careful to, to really follow everything that, that he has written. And then within that, to do our own, um, to add our own musicality and, and style to it, but which, which you really did, it's, it's really lovely. Can we just start again? Mm -hmm. And the, the opening was really, really lovely. Could you, I think, could you play a hair faster? You seem really comfortable in the hands or just to maybe just feel the little, just don't sit back on it again. I think just that kind of forward motion that I was talking with people before, bottom, bottom. Just, just don't sit back and get, get too comfortable with the opening. Just, just think a little bit, always forward motion through the bars. Let's just play a little bit of the first page. That's it. Yes, it it just it just feels like it has a little bit more energy and and impetus now. That's and and you're you're well able to play at that speed. That that's really great, lovely. Um, let's skip on a little bit. Can we just have a look at one? I'm going to come back to the beginning of the piece again, but I just like to look. If you go to the um the third page, I just wondered in your nine eight bars, if you want, if we just have a look at the rhythm there. I felt like I was missing the, the, the triplets. So maybe if we play, where's a nice place to go for it? It's so fiddly here, isn't it? Maybe let's go from the a tempo just at the very end of the second page, just to have a little run into it. And just, just watch your rhythm when you get to those nine eights. And again, ju just try and see if you can stick with that, that slightly fast, it's just a hair faster, but it makes all the difference. It, it, you've just got, there's a lovely energy and, and bounce to it now. I think that bar, because it goes into nine eight, I think we need to go into triplets in the second and third beat. Um, let me just see if I can go from, um, if I go from the bar before, so the end of the second line. So, so those two beats are, it did quite a bit faster. I think you were playing half speed or, or you were just playing semi quavers rather than um, grouping them as, as triplets there. Can we just try, I don't, let's try it maybe a little bit under speed. So if we go from um, the last bar of the second line there on page three, I know this is a little bit tricky pedals wise, but I think if you have, just make sure you've got your F natural on and then you'll be okay. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You've got it now. And just don't slow, don't slow down on them. So, um, one, two, three. And again, when it comes one, two, three. So can we just try that once more just from the rhythm? Cause I think you've got it. So again, just, just power through on those nine, eight bars. Don't, don't drop the speed. So just once more from the same place. That's it. Yeah, lovely. And I think Tournier and that, you know, it was really when Marcel Tournier was teaching, I think he wrote this in 1940. And it was really a golden age of harp players and harp teachers and harp music in, in France. So and they were I think they were really into the resonance and the sonority of the harp. And I think 
a really way, great way to support ourselves in, in the resonance of the harp is always really dig in when you've got a bass note, especially at the bottom of um, arpeggio. So really go for it with your, your F there, your low F. Really squeeze that fourth finger and so, you know, so that you can actually see the string being displaced and absolutely right in really connect with the palm of the hand you really want that motion so as loud as you can and then it just sets the whole harp up to ring so well so can we just go from the same place and just every time you have a low bass note just try and really really dig in with that fourth finger That's it. Good. And I think we just need to make sure um, at the end of this ar second arpeggio, somehow we need to damp a little bit there because otherwise we have this harmony is still ringing and then we're going into a new harmony. Oh, sorry. And, and it's clashing with, with what comes next. So can we, let's try the same place once more. And this time after you've played the, the F, just see if you can quickly damp with the left hand, just the lower notes so that we can go into the new harmony w with no clashes at all in the sound. Good. And it's that really awkward hard playing where there's not a, we don't want to lose the time in the tempo we don't want to add in a wrist but we've just got to let get that left hand quickly down to, to damp those lower notes so maybe while you're playing the last four notes in the in the right hand be just there and then whip the hand up again so it has to be you know very quick mo so you've played this in the left hand and then straight down and then straight back up again so just very quick just damp that, that low F. Let's just try once more that. That's it. And maybe just don't worry about the first one. I think it's fine to let it ring because it's the same harmony here. I think that's okay. It's just the second one. And we just need to, it's really the bass wires we need to stop ringing. So we need to stop the low F and the strings below it, even though we haven't played them because they're resonating in sympathy. So, so maybe try to aim to damp the F and everything lower and th that'll really stop the sound there. Can we, ju let's just try that bar. So it's the second last line the first bar of the second last line. Maybe if we just play it slowly. Sorry, it's the worst place to, to go from because the pedals are so complicated. So if we do. And then already you can maybe stop a little bit. So, and we'll just think about damping from that F note down just really decisively and then back up again. So just slowly once. From Don't worry, just from the second last, it may be the upbeat into the second last line. Okay. That's it. I Yeah, it's getting better. I think you just, you actually need to damp lo much lower in the harp than you're damping. So just have a look at your, just play your bass note F, the lowest note. That's it. And then... So if the, the top of the palm of the hand should touch that F and then the rest of the fingers and everything else catch the strings lower than that. So you're, re you're almost down to the, to the C, the low C. Okay. Just re yeah, ju don't worry about touching any of the gut strings. It's, we just need to, it's just that octave or so below the F. Just try it once more slowly. Yeah, that's it. Good, you're getting there. That's really good. And so just watch your um, 
don't lose your triplets in the nine eight bar there just watch that when that comes twice that's really really lovely can we move on to page four and we'll have a look at the at this lovely new section so this this tinkly bit here and you played this so evenly it was lovely I, I hear so often you hear big accents with the thumb there and, and you, you were just so smooth and even it was really really lovely I think it just maybe it can be a little bit more delicate can we just try from let's just go from that six eight and we'll hear a little bit of it That's it. Yeah, lovely. So I think now that I've heard you play it, that your pianissimo was fantastic. So actually now maybe we can, you, you've got such a lovely range of, of really soft dynamics. Now let's come up a little bit with the piano. So at the beginning of that a tempo section, you can afford now to come up a little bit for your piano so, th so that we can, we can hear the lovely drop to the pianissimo. And then let's carry on this time. And then when you get to the next section, just, just make sure to be a, a little louder again, back up to your piano here. Don't, don't be afraid to just up the dynamic ever so slightly. So just once more from the same place and we'll keep going this time. That's it, lovely. And so in that harmonic section, he has, um, uh, so getting a little bit slower bit by bit by the second bar. So you, you can already, so play the first bar as you did in rhythm. And, and then you were still quite in tempo in the second bar. I think you can just start holding back a little bit more. Ju just um, l l let's hear that over the three bars rather than just before the tempo. So will you try that? And, and, and just having that, just the slowing down over the, the following three bars. Just let's bring that out a little bit more. Great harmonics, by the way. That's it. Yeah, good, good. This is just such even, lovely playing. Really, really nice. And um, let's just go back to. I just want to practice that on retinon peu and peu section. I think I think we can just do more with it there. So, uh, as I said, so we'll be quite in tempo in the first bar, and we just want to draw it out a bit more. So, just relaxing every bar. And then you're back in tempo here. So it, it just felt to me um, like you were leaving the slowing down to, to the last beat just before the tempo. And then you, there was a really exaggerated slow. So I think kind of less slowing down, but over a longer phrase. Good. Let, let, let's, make, let's make even, this is, it's so lovely how you're playing this. I think we can make even more of those hairpins. So crescendo up and, and really dim, you can just make a little bit, just do what you're doing, but, but exaggerate it a little bit more. Let's go from the same place once more. And, and just, I just still feel that the, your bar before the tempo there's quite a big slowdown there and I'm still I'm still not feeling I'd rather less but but just to, to start feeling it earlier so so start kind of pulling back from two bars earlier
that's it and I think this whole section needs to needs to build a bit so I think by the time you get to the the end of that page where we're mezzo forte I think we can be mezzo forte in the right hand as well I, I know it's just the accompaniment but we, it, we just want the whole harp to speak a bit more by the time we get to the last line so Don't be afraid to, you, you, we've come from your beautiful piano pianissimo section where, where you've got such a lovely gentle tone and don't be afraid now to, to dig in here. Let, let's start building up because we're going to come up to a four day quite soon and we, we need to prepare for it. So shall we go from, um, let's go from, if we go from maybe the last two bars of the third line. So, um, oh, it's so hard to get the right pedals, isn't it? In this pace, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> No, I'm going to let you do it because I'm playing it all wrong. Just if you go from there. And so we'll just start to let's start to think about the bills. So when we get to mezzo forte, let's be mezzo forte both hands. Yeah, that. That's it. So I think when you when you get to the little um, the first bar of the second last line, I, so we've got a crescendo and a diminuendo, and maybe don't dimi diminuendo so much. So it's because we're 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 supposed to we've come from pianissimo to piano, and then we need to be mezzo forte, and it it shouldn't be a huge leap into mezzo forte. So maybe let's use that crescendo, and we can dim slightly, but not too much, so so that each couple of bars we're building up towards this mezzo forte. Can we just go, um, so one last time, so we'll go, we'll go from the middle of the third line yeah. and we'll just think about going up, so piano and, and up to mezzo forte. Let's, let's have loads of, you know, the way I was saying about let's use the, the bass notes to really get the sonority and the whole harp to resonate. So, so bomb, really go for it when you hit that B flat mezzo forte, really dig in with the fourth finger and thumb. You know, and if this was orchestrated, maybe, you know, there'd be a viola player standing up really happy to have this beautiful solo. Just really bring that out. So we want that to really, really sing out um, with the busy right hand. So really let that float over and come out. Um, shall we just go from, um, oh, uh, let's go from just the, the end of the second last line, if that's a comfortable place to go from. I just want to hear that really big B flat on the bass. That's it. Good. Yes, that, that was really. Can you play that one more time? It was so lovely that you really sang out the left hand. Gorgeous. Um, and so we'll, we'll carry, we'll play the same, but we'll carry on. Just make sure we mustn't have a, a complete stop before the next section. We, ju we just need to find a way to go into that. You can you can do your pull up and everything. And, and if you need to damp notes, but let's just make sure that it, it, it sounds a little bit like you're coming to a complete stop and then starting again. So just see if we can just have a little bit somehow of, of continuity into the, the next section. So one last time. Yeah. The, you had the right I know there was a little pedal thing but but that was lovely you 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 followed through into the next section that was a really lovely join and and we didn't hear the kind of sudden stop gorgeous can we just do once more that was so nice and then I won't stop you let's let's keep going into the next section That's it. So just stop there for a second. I really like the tempo you're in now. Can you just just play? Is it possible just to go from the top of that page? And I just want you to play two or three bars just in that tempo. 
And then we're going to go back to the beginning and see if we can match the tempo. That's it, good. So just stop there. Let's put the heart back into F and we'll just see if we can just remember that tempo and see if you can start the very, very beginning of the heart of the piece at that speed. Good, yeah. I think that's really nice. It's just, I, I think a couple of times it, you, you just started a little bit, you know, at a very safe tempo. And I think you, you're, um, technique you're you're absolutely well able to play it at this fast and it just gives us a little, little bit of a lift and a bit of energy fantastic so let's go back now to page six where we were so i'd love to hear again let's just take it apart so we won't we'll play the left hand as it is so you've got this again i think the viola has the tune here again if we were going to orchestrate this so We want that really to come out with our thumbs and second fingers. And then a lot of the right hand is just a compliment, but there is a little melody at the top, isn't there, in the, in, in the thumb, so. So I'd love to us to just, let's just ignore the semi-quavers and let's play the quavers and the crotchets. If you, are you able to just bring, have a look at the music for this bit, because I won't get you to play it as written. So just make sure it's comfortable there. So I want you to play. I think it's just helpful just to think of that lovely inner melody and then the melody at the top as well okay so you can play it under tempo as well we're not worried about the tempo here it's more to just sing those lines out so just get your a a flat pedal I tell you what, just try the left hand first, because let's hear that lovely, so. Let's just try those two bars, just the left hand. That's it, and I think again, let, let's shape this so that we're really leading to that, that E natural, so. Let's really go for it. And, and away again. Just try that once more with the left hand. Lovely. Yeah, that's it. Fantastic. So let's just try the right hand on its own. So you're just playing, starting on the E natural. Okay, I don't mind what, what you can use all thumbs or whatever fingering you like there. And just do it slowly because it's tricky to, to take it out like this. That's it, good. Let's just try that once more. And now I want you to really think about the shape of the right hand. So really sing it as if we were a real sustain instrument again, like as, you know, as if you had a bow or, um, you know, you were singing it. So, so this, even if the sound is dying away on the harp, let's, let's keep singing it in our head. So it, it's really sustaining. Lovely. Yes, that's, that's it. Do you want to give the, I know this is very tricky to do it like this, but do you want to give it a go? Just so play the left hand as is and the right hand just like that and do it nice and slow. I'm, I'm not worried about the tempo. That's it. Fantastic. Yeah, good. So I think that's a really nice way because I think sometimes, especially this piece, it's so difficult. There's so many notes. We have to spend so many hours practicing it, don't we? And then sometimes I think we just become a little bit immune to some of the lovely little melodies. So it's nice to just, you know, you know it really well now. So it's, it's nice to just, 
you know, take it apart like like as if it's made of Lego and, we, you know, we just try little bits and see how they sound together so that we can just get it to really sing out. Let's play it as it is now. And, the, and as I said, let's let's just take, let's not lose that. You're really bringing out the lovely melody in the left hand, but let's not lose the top in the right hand as well. So just... So that is really, really singing out over the top. Okay, so let's go from the, the tempo there. lovely so I always think it's almost like there's a there's a little bit of a duet going on there so um if we get to line three so again I think if you've got time at home ju just practice it like that taking out the little semi quavers in the right hand so you can just really hear that melody you know even if you just play it with the right hand So you can really phrase it and then you can hear that in your head when you're, when you're playing the, the whole thing. I think, you know, maybe that, that would be the flute soaring over the top of the orchestra and that, that would, you know, we'd really hear that. So we want to really hear it in the harp as well. Brilliant. Can we go once more from this section? I think we just, we've been working now quite intricately into it. So let's just go back to your original tempo. I think we've lost a little bit of the speed now. So ju just go for it now. Don't worry about anything we'll, we'll just play it and, and enjoy it and let's see where we go that's it's really great I, I, it's lovely fantastic shape now I think again this comes back to um Tournier being really really specific about what he wanted and how he you know he, re he really noted down how he wanted us to play certain phrases so we've got we've got those phrases where he's he's written you know he could have written it all semi quavers couldn't he but but he has he's also added the um the crotchet and, and the to sort of I think to announce that he wants us to play that as a little melody but then it go then he just writes semi quavers at a certain point doesn't he so when we get to halfway through the second last line and um, so let's see where we go in the rocky so I think there we do need to go back into not accenting anything in the right hand so now it is just accompanying okay so let's just try and be really even in the right hand. Nothing should be sticking out until he marks an accent on the A flat for the change of harmony. And you can go for it and then really, really even the whole way until the original melody comes back. So can we just practice? Um, let's go from... Sorry, this is again quite an awkward place to go from. Should we go from maybe the last bar of the third line on page six or somewhere around there where you feel comfortable so and we'll just watch out for the middle of the second last line where we need to go into semi quavers and just be very very even and nothing sticking out there in the right hand Great. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. And 
I think we can make more. I so this bit, there's not a lot going on here, and you know, it's not that interesting here. It's like a bit of a filler here. And then we come to this lovely, just a B flat all of a sudden. I think that is such a beautiful moment of this piece. So I think I think you could just just have a real. You don't need to take time or anything, but I think just just we need to mark that you know we've had all this you know pretty harp, lovely, nothing happening, and then oh what a lovely chord. So just do something. We just need to do something to mark that. So you know I think it's ju just really wallow in that moment of that that gorgeous harmony there with the B flat coming in again. So should we just try? Maybe from the last bar of page six, and then we'll keep going. Fantastic. I, so I think in this last, we've just got a couple of minutes left, but I think you can really let your hair down now. Really dig in with your bass notes. You know, get, get everything out there. If you've got any rage or anything, just really dig in, let it out. And then just make sure it, this was, it was good. You were really building up the tension. And then it was like you, you just got really relaxed here. And you were enjoying yourself too much. You need to keep the impetus going. It, you know, it's a bit agitato here again. And it needs to be like that to the end, I think. So, so don't sit back and relax and think, oh, what beautiful, lovely harp. You know, be, be the bad harpist here. Let's, let's go for it. So let's dig in here from here to the end. Can we just go from the 9-8? And I want you to just absolutely go for it. Fantastic. Really, really well done. Brilliant. Absolutely. Just juggernaut to the end. Don't slow down. That's great. Really, really beautifully played, Cara. Well done. You're a superstar. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, uh, Cara. Well done. Uh, beautiful playing. And again, Jean, for all of your comments and insights. Uh, that concludes the, the, the teaching part of our masterclass this afternoon. And, and thank you to Jean again. And thank you to all of our participants. Uh, for a really lovely afternoon of music, apart from anything else. But it's always um, interesting to, to hear people speak about the instrument, about the music. And I think this is the first time, certainly, uh, that I can remember that we've presented a harp masterclass. So um, we're delighted to have done that. And we hope to do, to do so again in the future. At this point, we will move to our Q&A session. And uh, I'd just like to ask uh, Siobhan and Paige to switch back their microphones and cameras, if that's OK. And um, <laughs> generally speaking, we, we find that our participants have, have, have questions that have either arisen during the masterclass or they were um, holding uh, to the end. So perhaps in, in the order that the participants played, um, we'll ask uh, about their questions. And then I'll move to questions that may have come in on our social media channels. Paige, you played first. Um, have you anything? at this point that you'd like to ask Jean? 
page. We can't just hear you at the moment. I'm not sure. Uh, you appear to be unmuted, all right. But uh, is there, I think, something wrong with your mic, maybe? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering, um, what's the best piece of advice you could give to a young harpist? Well, I think listen to your teacher because you all have fantastic teachers. So you need to listen to your teacher. And I guess the other bit of advice is, so we need to really practice our technique, don't we? It's really important. But we also need to practice expressing ourselves through music. And I think sometimes because we've got to do so much practice, the harp is a difficult instrument. We, you know, we've got to spend hours and hours and hours. We've got pedals, fingers, a lot going on. And sometimes we forget you know, why, why are we playing the harp or, you know, we can get into this kind of playing a bit automatically. So we have to find ways to connect to the music. And so for me, though, I think it's different for everybody, but I do that. I like to listen to all sorts of instruments and um, to be inspired, not just by harpists, but mandolin players, cello players, all, and just see what I can pull in from, from other instruments and just think, okay, maybe I can make that sound that they're making. What colours can I add? And I really like to, and I, and I always did this in college um, on the advice of my teacher, if I'm playing a piece, I really read into the time, you know, is there a novel I can read about? I think especially a lot of you are playing French harp music and it, it's such a golden age. There's such magnificent wealth of, you know, go and look at paintings of the time, impressionist paintings, books, poetry, films, anything that you think might give you a bit of inspiration so that you can have just something in your head that will get you back into the zone of that piece, even if it's something that you've had to practice for a long time. Thank you, Jean. Um, uh, Siobhan, uh, have you something that you'd like to ask Jean? Yeah, I do. Um, I was wondering if you had any recommendations for different countries or institutes to um, study under after my degree? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we've we, there's a lot of COVID restrictions, but also I think it's a fantastic time to maybe we can visit. There's a lot of virtual visits going on in colleges and you can have lessons with people that you would never have been able to have lessons with before. So what I would say to you, I don't think it's the reputation of the college. You need to find a teacher that suits you. So, you know, if there's somebody go and listen to lots of harpists and if there's somebody you really like the sound they make and you'd like to maybe sound like that or you like their musicality, go and, you know, sit in on a virtual masterclass, maybe make make contact with them and, you know, see if you can meet them, because I think it's really important that you see each other. So that's my advice. Thank you. Wise, wise advice. Thank you, Jean. And uh, Cara. Ask, uh, because you've had such a versatile and diverse career, how did you go about uh, creating that at the beginning? And do you think you would approach it differently if you were starting now? Well, do you know what? I think that Irish harpists and people that study in Irish institutions, you're already at an advantage. And I had a couple of years at um, CIT as well before I came to London, because I think so you're getting the fantastic classical grounding. But I think also, particularly with the harp, you have the chance to play traditional music and you have the chance to really build up your your ear training, your playing by ear, your improvising. And that was something that I always did. So I, I think like most of you started on the Irish harp and I always kept it going. And I think I always tried to collaborate with, you know, if there was a chance to play in a band for fun or just to play different styles of music, because, you know, you need to be really good on your technique. You need, re need to really be able to sight read. But I think if you can also play by ear and play different harps and be open to playing in different genres, to be listening to everything. So I think while you're at college there and, Dublin and Cork go for it and, and embrace all those opportunities that you have to play in different genres because I think in some other countries it you know they're so hot out in just the classical style that that they don't have that opportunity so that's a unique selling point I think of Irish harpists. Great thank you very much uh, now we have a number of questions in from members of the public um, first one comes from comes from Kira and she asked when should you get your own concert harp Ooh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because it's a big investment. But, you know, I think if you're if you think you're really serious, it, you, you have to be able to or you have to have access to an instrument to play every day. So but I know it it, it is a really big investment. But as I said, if you're serious and, and there's a ways and means to do it, then go for it. OK, yeah. 
And uh, then Martin asks, uh, thoroughly enjoyed your master cl masterclass, though I uh, am not a harpist. Uh, you have referred to the pedals a number of times. Can you explain for the lay person what they are and how do they work? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. So I wonder, would, would one of the participants be able to just put their video on the pedals and then I'll, sp I'll speak about the top of the harp because you can't see my pedals and I think that would help. So just if somebody, I don't know if that's really complicated for, but if one of the other participants could show the pedals. So basically we have seven pedals at the bottom of the harp and they're attached through the column of the harp, which is here at the end. This is the column, it's hollow, and there's metal rods run all the way up. And those in turn are attached. We have two golden discs on the top of each string. Now the strings are color coded. Oh, you can see Cara's pedals at the back there. So my red strings are the C strings and the pedals are for the sharps and the flats. So at the top, they're in C flat. And then if I press the pedal down once, the C pedal, it goes to C natural because it's moving this disc. And then if I press it again, I get C sharp. So we set our pedals, for example, into if we want to play G major, we'll set all the pedals into natural and we'll set the F pedal to sharp. So we're in G major. And then if we want to have an F natural, we'll have to move the pedal. So I always think that harpists were a bit like swans. It, it, it all looks serene up here, gliding along. And then our feet are really busy under the water. Thank you. Um, Stephanie asks, she says, great masterclass, fab music and players. One question, your feedback is really clear, which is great. When you talk about shaping, is this what some other harpists refer to as color? No, so I think color is you're trying to get contrast and a different sound. And when I'm talking about shaping, I'm particularly talking about a melodic line. And so I think the issue is when somebody's singing or playing the violin, say it's going to be sustained, they don't lose the sound. Whereas we pluck a string and as soon as we've plucked it, the, the sound starts to die away. And there's nothing we can do about that. It, it just... But that's the nature of the instrument. So we have to really give into the string to, to help the sound to sustain. So, so when I'm talking about shaping, I'm, I'm talking about trying to find a way to, to really articulate into the next note, into the next note. So we do give the impression of singing rather than just that, that the harp sounding choppy. So it's, it's just trying to find a way around the, the, the decay of the sound, which is a natural thing, but just to be able to allow us to, to form as if we were singing. Can, can I just ask you a question just uh, developing from that, Jean? Uh, you mentioned, uh, or, or your biography mentions that you also play electric harp. Um, can that be modified, I mean, and experimented with in, in a similar way that, that can an electric guitar with various effects to sustain the sound, or is that something you, 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 you use in that context? Yeah, you can do all sorts of things with the electric harp. So, um, there's a French harp company called Kamak and they got together with a bicycle company to because the harp is very heavy. And so they wanted to create a harp that you could perform with standing up. There's a fantastic harpist that I recommend people listen to called Deborah Henson Conant and she worked with Kamak. So they made a five kilo harp. It's a very, very light carbon fiber. And it so you can play it strapped on with a harness and stand up and be like Jimi Hendrix. And then, yes, you can run through loop pedals, effect pedals, all sorts of things. So, so it's just bringing the harp into a completely new yeah. world. It's, it's really great fun. Fascinating. OK, thank you. Um, one more question we have, and that is from Anya. And uh, very much uh, of the moment, Anya asks, do you have any advice in these difficult times to young players considering a career in music? Yes, I mean, it's it's crazy times, isn't it? And I, 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 it seems to me that you, you are being hopefully looked after in the arts in Ireland, I hope. Over here, we've been told a lot by the government in um, England that we're not viable anymore. So it is tricky times. But, you know, the musicians, composers, we've always had difficult times. I mean, look at Mozart, you know, penniless and they, they, we've always had difficult times. Which, if it's something that you want to do, if you can't do anything else, then you just you have to do it if, if it's your passion and you will find a way if it's your passion. So we just have to, you know, just keep moving forward, keep learning. Keep, you know, I know we can't be in the same room as people very easily, but there, there are ways to keep collaborating, keep listening. And 
I think the one thing I've enjoyed is I've, I've had the opportunity to go to virtual concerts in countries that I wouldn't have been able to go to before. And I've heard lots of different groups that I've never had the chance to listen to. So I think, and just make the most of, we have the gift of time at the moment as well. So make the most of that, put the time in now and it'll stand to you later when things go back to normal. Great. Uh, very good advice, uh, as always, Jean. Um, that's really all we have time for today. So I would just like to thank you once again, Jean, for presenting such a wonderful masterclass this afternoon. And uh, we hope to have you back uh, either virtually or preferably in person uh, back in the National Concert Hall as soon as we possibly can. And uh, to our participants, Paige, Siobhan and Cara, thank you very much for engaging with this masterclass. Wonderful playing. And I have absolutely no doubt that we're going to be hearing an awful lot more of all three of you in the future. So thank you very much for your participation today. On the subject of virtual activities, uh, please do keep an eye out for more in our masterclass series in the spring, where we will continue trying to bring the very best of Irish musicians and Irish diaspora musicians um, to uh, the students, the upcoming musicians of the future in, in Ireland. And uh, we will be continuing that in the spring. I'd just also like to draw your attention to two of our upcoming streamed concerts, our live streams as part of our, our classical live stream. And we have the Messiah on December the 3rd. So uh, it's hard to believe we're heading into that season already. And we have a, a, stream, a live stream concert with Irish National Opera on the 5th. So as you mentioned, Jean, there is plenty of music still to be heard live, even though we're not in the position to be in the room. Um, so we hope that you can find something of interest over the coming weeks uh, with the National Concert Hall live stream series. Jean, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Uh, good evening, everybody, and we hope to see you again soon. But for now, it's goodbye and uh, have a pleasant evening. Thank you.